As a developer here in Australia, I always leave my designs until last, and sometimes this can mean that my website or application just doesn't look any good. This is why we've got Enhance UI, a book I'm putting together which talks about how to improve your design, especially for developers. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at this design here from Gustav, which is a 20-year-old developer in Brazil. He focuses on front-end and freelancing, and he's put together this portfolio design. We're going to go through it in a few minutes and have a look at what types of tips and recommendations we can provide to make this look a little bit better. I've recreated this entire design here in Figma so that we can grab different elements and move them around to see what we can do to fix up the design. The first thing I'd like to do is have a look at this header up here at the top. If you have a look, it's only 38 pixels in height, which is quite small, especially for a desktop size. These items here are also quite small and difficult to read. They're only 10 pixels in font size and this makes it quite hard to be able to see on a desktop. So my first recommendation would be to increase these. The minimum size I would normally recommend is about 16 pixels. So we'll update each one of these. We'll also give it a little bit more spacing. In this case, I'm going to just snap it here from the left and give it about 30 pixels. Let's do this for all the items over here so that they're a lot more visible. In Figma, when you're designing stuff, you will have an auto snap. So now that we are creating 30 pixels in uh, in spacing, you'll see that actually pops in for each one of these items. So this way it's nice and easy to update in your own design. Let's finish up these ones here. And once we do, we can take a look at the active item. The current active item doubles as a home page is the welcome page. That welcome page, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to show up very well that it is the current active item. And this is because there is no way to identify it. So my recommendation in this case would be to possibly bold it and that way you know what page you're on. The other thing I would say is that this background here, this color that we have, doesn't seem to work very well for our items. It seems to have low contrast and it's kind of difficult to read as well. And I would recommend actually getting rid of this or even just making it pop in here near the top. This way we've got a bit more focus for the menu itself. Once we do this, we will have to update the logo over here. Right now it's a white color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to a black color so it's visible. We'll also move the menu items down just a little bit so that they have a bit more room to breathe. The only other thing here is that this logo is actually kind of small. Normally I never say to increase the size of the logo, but in this case I think it would be okay just to scale it up a tiny little bit. I'm going to increase it to just about 40 pixels or 42 pixels in height and we're just going to center it based on our menu over here. That way it's a lot more visible. Now we can take a look at the hero section here where we've got the big avatar as well as the welcome part. There's a few moving elements here. We have these lines, which I'm not too sure what the focus of those are. And we've got some odd positioning here that we can fix up a little bit. The first thing I would say is that if you're using a large font, don't make it too bold because it's already quite large. So in this case, I'm going to reduce the font weight just to a regular size. The other thing I'm going to do is just move this to be aligned on the left, similar to the other item here for our main message. We'll just move it up a little bit. This way, it looks like it makes a lot more sense. I'll get rid of the line here at the top, and instead I'll move this line here underneath, and we'll increase the width of it. We could maybe make it about 130 pixels here, and finally we could give it a different color. Maybe we'll give it a light gray, just so that we can see the elements focusing in mainly on the title here, then the secondary line, and then finally the line over here. So this makes a lot more sense. In terms of the avatar, I think that's perfectly fine. We don't have to change anything just there. Then we can move on to the next section here, where we have our skills and about me. For this section, I can see that there is a bit of odd uh, alignment happening. The alignment here for the skill sets and the icons seem to be offset a little bit, as well as this about me section. The font sizes and weights more or less are okay. I don't think there needs to be much adjustment there, but there's also this odd statement here that says short facts about me, which is just off to the side. In terms of this whole section here, the color makes it a bit hard in terms of accessibility because the color is actually quite heavy based on the gray here and this color of uh, this uh, dark yellow. So the first thing I would recommend is either lightening this color right up or actually making it much darker with the font being white. 
since we've got a pretty dark theme happening here near the top, I would actually go for this darker shade. So let's apply this to both of our elements over here. And this time instead, we can make the text actually a white color. And this way it can stand out a lot more. We can also maybe update the element here to have that same color as our header. And the only other thing I would say is we could move the alignment of these. Since we are introducing the person here on the left, we should have the about us section on the left too. So I'm just going to move it a little bit to align it much better here on the left, as well as this line here, which I'm going to increase the width of once more a little bit. We're going to check the spacing for this, and we're just going to move it about 30 pixels from the top. And I'm going to move this whole section now here to the left where we have our skills. With our skills, we're going to move them to the right for the time being, and we'll have a look at them in a second. Let's move this here to the left just so that it's well aligned. And I can see that's looking much better already. This one here for the short facts for the time being, I'm just going to get rid of that entirely. And then this one here for the skills, I'm just going to move it in a little bit more to the left. So it's almost starting here at the right of our row. Finally, we have our skills here on the right. And these currently are just icons. And right now, from a recruiter point of view, which is probably going to be the person that is looking at this, they might not know what these icons represent. This is why in terms of the skills here, I would highly recommend to actually have a name next to each one of these. So in this case, we might have them vertically aligned. And when we do this, we might put the name of each underneath. So what I'll do is maybe copy this across and put something good in here like HTML5 and say three years experience. This basically gives you the meaning of what the item is, as well as how much experience you have working in it. Now, all of these also are quite popular. So most likely every person will have them, but Sometimes it's just good to be able to show your skill sets like this because it gives you a bit more idea of who you are and what you work with. Now, I've just put in a couple here real quick, but this already looks like it's giving a lot more information. The only other thing is that we might bold the title for each one of those and the three years experience. We could reduce the size of that text just down to 14 pixels so that the title stands out a lot more. That should be more or less it in terms of the skill section. If there was other things like working experience that you could probably have here and as another row or column, but otherwise I'm pretty happy with that. In terms of our design now, we're almost finished. The only other benefits you could possibly do is maybe add a bit of a background here to all of these items. Right now, there isn't much happening here. So what we could do is maybe like a linear gradient. We could grab a color like we're using here in the header and possibly give it a very light shade, say maybe even 25% opacity. And that way it looks pretty good. We could expand this out all the way. And now we've got a bit more going on here. We could apply that same sort of a linear gradient here to the next section. So we could start this one off here with the color, but it could start off a little bit darker. So that way it gives it a feel like there's a bit of a shadow happening there. And all the text will pop out a little bit more as well on a dark background. The very last thing I wanted to do is create a call to action on this page. Whenever you have a page, you want the user to do something specific. And in this case, this is a portfolio. So most likely we want the person to call us. So what I'm going to do is actually select to use the color here we're using on the bottom. And we're going to create a button here to maybe say download a resume. Let's copy out the font we're using here and let's type in download resume. And let's set the color here to be white for that. We're going to place it on top of our rectangle and we're going to make the font size just a little bit smaller, maybe 18 pixels. And we'll just place it over here. Finally, we'll make sure that the spacing here for everything is a little bit better. So we'll give all the elements a little bit more room to breathe. And that should be more or less it. Now this button will be our main call to action for anyone visiting the page. But if they want to learn more about Gustav here, they can scroll down and see his skill sets and a little bit about him as well. Now that we're finished with this design, let's take a look at some of these elements to have a look at some of the changes. 
Here is our new design and here is the previous design. One thing I'd like to really take note of is that just spending a few minutes thinking about the colors and positioning of a design can make a lot of difference. Here we've increased the contrast of a lot of those elements and this means that the text is a lot more visible now. We've also moved the text alignment so everything is red nice and aligned here on the left. This means that most of the icons and positioning for additional content is on the right. The menu item also stands out a lot more now as well as the logo. Hopefully all of these changes are subtle but they make a big impact on the design of the page. Of course, like any design, there's still always room for improvement, but this is just a few minutes of taking a look at the UI and seeing the improvements that can be made immediately. This is the kind of stuff I'm trying to put together in Enhance UI, which is a book that won't turn you into a graphics designer, but will give you the skills to be able to improve your own website and app just so that they look a little bit better. Check it out on the link below. I'm looking for submissions for the next episode, so if you guys want your own website or portfolio featured, link it in the description or send me a message on Twitter. I hope you guys enjoyed this one though. If you did, hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.